what's up we're in the next part please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings i'm busy talking about my exhaustion with this hospice that is south africa that they've put me in even though i'm entirely healthy i imagine that what they're doing is a state capture witches have literally taken over the state they're running it all over the show in these streets creating out of a nation that was perfectly healthy thriving growing and going somewhere a failed state they are literally creating a failed state out of south africa and i mean to watch your own nation just burn because people are insisting on destroying civilians on the ground individual citizens of the country uh, it's like you know what burn while i'm far away at a distance like literally seeing the ash heap of sodom from a distance like that's what needs to happen i'm not gonna burn with you south africa i'm not doing it i chose jesus it would be an abomination in his sight for me to be judged along with the wicked he will extract Noah, Daniel, and Job out of an ecosystem and then judge that land, given that you're as wicked as you are. Far be it from God to let me burn with this burning country. Far be it. Far be it. Like, I am done. I don't even care at this point if South Africans feel so bereft at what I'm saying that they unsubscribe from me. I do not care. I've been left destitute to languish because I chose Christ and I tried to do the whole being with brethren thing. And I got afflicted by people right inside the church. I got squeezed out. I have been scattered as a sheep because false shepherds were all up in my grill. I cannot do this. But whether or not I cannot do it, it appears is quite irrelevant to some. Because they're telling themselves that I could lawyer anyway. I'm not going anywhere. They're telling themselves that they're going to basically rule, rule me for the rest of my days. They have accepted my, my, my losses, my want. They have taken a perfectly viable economic citizen, an intelligent woman with a bright future and accepted that she will never use her mind. Like proper guy, somebody gets born. Like you have no respect for human life. It's just sacrilege. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody gets born and is packed by God with a suite of gifts and talents. And then some buffoons make a decision that they don't matter. That whether or not you can sing is irrelevant. Whether or not you can dance is irrelevant. Whether or not you can crunch numbers is irrelevant. Whether or not you're analytical is irrelevant. Whether or not you are an, a great orator, the gift of the gab, blessed with the ability to piece together your words nicely is irrelevant. Like blessed with the ability to write really great poetry is irrelevant. Based with the art of literature is irrelevant. Based with, uh, again, what is it like jam packed with, um, just like, you know, you're, you're, you're crafty, your hands, you, you can paint, you can draw, you can make sculptures. All that which is whatever God has put in your body to do. For people to just literally one day wake up and freaking decide that that's irrelevant. That your brain is unimportant to be used. That is the conclusion that my uncle, one of my uncles has come to. Uh, uh, con uh, uh, <laughs> concerning the recognition of the fact that I am a waste of a life. And that I am brainy. But I guess you win some, you lose. Like literally I was born with a wheat of gifting that some people have made a decision that's irrelevant <laughs> so basically i went to school right i went to primary school i learned a b c one two three i learned how to draw triangles and squares i learned how to recite poetry i learned how to tie my shoelaces i fell and i got healed put bandages on my body I passed grade one, two, three, four, five, all the way to matric. I then went to university. I studied. I worked in corporate South Africa. I did all that for somebody to make a decision that it doesn't really matter. Like it makes my whole life worthless. It makes everything I did meaningless. It makes the trip to school in Kumbi, Ya Abu Isaac, worthless. It makes all those days when I woke up not wanting to wake up, wearing school uniform in winter, wearing polo necks underneath my shirt and still freezing in school, despite wearing layers upon layers of clothes on me because the classrooms were much too cold. It makes all that which I went through literally worthless. Like people woke up, some of whom I went to that same primary school with and we shivered in that same class that did not have enough heat. They made a decision that all those winter days and all those polonics that I got rebuked for wearing underneath my school uniform because it was not in tandem with school code, worthless. It makes all the decisions I made, whether or not to join the netball team, whether or not to take this subject set in grade 10, when you're choosing your electives, irrelevant. Like every, um, I can't, like, I'm sorry, you know, South Africa, like, like all of it. You know what you remind me of? Witches in this country. 
You're like the Taliban in Afghanistan after Joe Biden did that irresponsible pulling out. You know how silly they looked in government with their guns as they were taking a photo in the parliamentary buildings because now they were running the show. Like these uneducated, unlearned people on politics, on how to run a country, are just taking it over because apparently it's theirs for it's for them to take. It's theirs to take. Yeah, you remind me of the Taliban, which is it's a state capture. This is a state capture. You have taken over South Africa and made a decision that certain people in this country that were supposed to be so important to it, to the economy, to the rebuilding of our infrastructure. You made a decision that people that were supposed to make important decisions economically for this country, big minds, that were supposed to shift paradigms in this country. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so emo. But at the same time, and this is funny, you made a decision that what they could have done for the country is irrelevant. What does that leave South Africa with exactly? You. Mediocre, full of sabotage, dastardly, and the only ones able to make important decisions for a country that needs sober minds to operate, that it might be kept aloft, not psychotic minds, because witchcraft gives you a psychosis. I spoke about that in my first part. When you partake in sorcery, you, you wear a psychosis. How in the world is the country then being run by a bunch of sociopaths that are one dream and one vision away from being abandoned by everyone in their lives? You have made a decision that all of my intelligence does not matter. That all that hardship that I endured in school in winter, thanks to cold classrooms, is just nothing. That me waking up without wanting to is irrelevant. The amount, oh goodness, but like the amount of time that I spent studying, crunching, yo oh, guys, the sleepless nights, the essays out here. There was a time when I wrote an essay on those old school computers that if you don't save and the computer crashes, you have to start from scratch. There was a time when I wrote an essay and something like two quarters of it disappeared because the computer just switched off on me. And I was writing the final draft the day before. I had to submit it one day late and get minus 5% because I had to write, rewrite all of it. Put, I was literally at the point of putting in refer the reference list. Yeah, footnotes and everything. Guys, like, I went through that for nothing. I went through that for nothing. I lost that minus 5% for nothing. I... I, 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 I perused, like guys, I spent so many hours studying, like so many hours studying. I spent so many hours studying, tired, out of my mind. Day before the exam, I could never sleep. I used to look forward to after the exam was over because then I would sleep for 24 hours. Coming out of bed just to eat, pee, and basically shower. But in the run up to, I just would not be able to because I was always panicking. All that was for nothing. All those hours that I spent, Kohol 29, Flower Hall, all those like like writing examinations, all the old like proper Senate House Drawing Hall, where we used to write exams for comp mats. I did all that for nothing, for nothing. <laughs> like yeah, and I've got an uncle that's just made a decision that that's a thing. That, that it's entirely irrelevant that I am really intelligent. I have got a whole entire conglomerate of witches that made a decision that corporate South Africa does not need me. That this country's economy does not need me. That my mind can be done without. How many minds like mine are missing from the South African equation? How many? While well, mediocre folk who are full of jealousy, sabotage and envy are the ones running these streets without people knowing just truly what the country can do because some of us are just not there. We are just hovering around below sea level. It is no wonder in South Africa you find a bizarre statistic where it is that you'll have a whole BCom accounting graduate navigating cars in and out of parking lots. It's a freaking state capture. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why that stuff happens. That's why a person with a whole teacher's degree, albeit there being a shortage of teachers in the country, is waiting tables at Wimpy. Like, Papa, that's what's happening. That's why a whole BCom accounting graduate is working at a call center at MTN. It's because some cousin has made a decision that I don't care that you crunched numbers, that you passed first, second and third year, graduated. I don't care because you are going to work at Woolies. You're going to scan groceries. You're going to fold clothes. You are going to navigate cars in and out of a parking lot while some stingy driver gives you two rands. Even though you studied for years at university. I met at one of the complexes that I was working at. A security guard, he was working as a concierge in the clubhouse. This man had a, is it mechanical or electrical engineering degree? But he was a security guard concierge at 
one of the Baldwin Group properties I used to stay at, those travesties in the country to account for the unemployment rate of the country, to account for the skills exodus, the skills bleed, the skills lack. How in the world do you have a skills lack when you've got an electrical engineer or a, was it a mechanical engineer out here telling people that this is their key for their particular unit or that's where the swimming pool for the clubhouse is or this is the code for the Wi-Fi in the clubhouse. A person that studied mechanical engineering at a university is a concierge, security guard slash whatever because a guy's got to eat, right? A guy's got to eat. That, that's what's happening in South Africa. People that end up joining the police force that is severely underpaid because they just could not break into their field of study after their parents spent all that money at varsity or they took out all those loans or financial aid and then not get a job. And then next thing you're working as a police officer, signing affidavits out here doing a job you never signed up for because the police force needed people and you were there recommended to you by your grandmother because it's it, it's something yana jabu until you finally get your job interview meanwhile jabu has been come up against by the whole family so all he can do is be a police officer growing little by little incrementally getting little stipends from the government getting little home loans you know uh, subsidies for from the government however having such a small little salary that every so often he has to um, basically take a bribe in his stride just to basically supplement his income but this year is a graduate from fits that wanted to work a job in the financial space since he did graduate with corporate finance and investments but he is a cop now i mean this is not me hating on cops or whatever but this is the nonsense going on in south africa and as for me I mean, I don't have to tell you, I'm super educated. I was left with one stupid module to graduate. And in or throughout my degree, I studied so many things. I would have been a triple major. I would have inevitably gone for my master's. I would have inevitably been up by today. I would have been a doctor. And then people decided that they're going to pull a rug from underneath my feet. And now corporate South Africa feels as if they're really, if we don't know what we don't have, we won't miss it. So they won't miss me because they don't know what they had in me. They don't know where I'd be getting interviewed. They don't know what uh, basically news networks would be trying to talk to me. What radio stations would be trying to talk to me because of what position I would be in. I would likely by today be a managing director of some company in some capacity, but no. I'm sitting at the back of my mom's house gathering dust in a shack, dealing with a bunch of licentious, lascivious, perverted men out here trying to make me either a mistress or a second wife, while women look at me like you are so pedantic with your stupid little insistences on waiting on God for a husband. Why don't you just settle? Why don't you just go and see a sangoma or something? Then you'll be okay. And they don't realize that they're speaking to a woman that would have been their boss. That is South Africa. I can't be here. I can't stay. I'm going to die. Like, I'm thoroughly going to die. Those who have done this to me with an artificial intelligence indeed just like the singularity are gloating over my lowliness and my sorrow, my poverty, my struggle and my want, albeit having put me in a position to be that impoverished. I will perish at the hands of jealous people who will only grieve what they have done, shake like Lady Macbeth over the blood of the king but only once he's dead and then maybe even commit suicide from an exorbitant amount of guilt. Only once I've died. People who would shake only once I've died. But in the run-up to, apparently allegedly my death would have been a mercy act, a necessary evil, or something they didn't expect to happen, but I mean really and truly, we could not possibly allow her to live. So we left her to die. You know how all of a sudden when a person has passed away, you think about them more solemnly with, with a greater, you know, respect for what they liked and were like even though you could not care less to pay them two minutes of attention when they were alive that's just the thing that death does it makes you think more deeply about people and these random humans will have listened to content like this recalled all of my pain and all of my sorrow be lambasted by what it means for them in their consciences they would have ignored all that and then be shaking like Lady Macbeth and end up committing suicide over having caused a woman to die from having nothing and going nowhere. I apologize. I have got to defect from this country. I don't even know how it's going to happen. But I'm go. I have to leave. I have to leave. Because a whole nation has made a decision that my skills are irrelevant. My intelligence is worthless. That I wore school uniform at all and attended classes shivering in winter, utterly boiling in summer playing around in a school playground, getting scarred, flirting with some stupid boys on the school playground, doing things that kids do, and then graduating from one grade to the next to the next to the next until eventually I get to university, that all that was for nothing. 
that all of my experiences that basically make me the full well-rounded woman that i am today are irrelevant like that, that like literally just taking a person and extinguishing them from the earth before they even die that's what happens in africa extinguishing people just voos, like proper making out of them like houdini little magicians that just disappear from society altogether they make people disappear when you are that bump in the night that haunting it's bad enough that you don't respond to your own conscience the law of god on your heart and your own desire for affiliation and your own fear of being a fugitive for life it's bad enough that you don't respond to those basic principles but just by mere virtue of the fact that you are content with doing that to people i apologize you deserve for your countries to be left by your best people and for you to burn like sodom you deserve it you deserve it when you would when the best women that would have made for the best matriarchs and fair no well not so much a matriarch but a family a caregiver a nurturer when the best nurturers in your country can't even be moms when the best women that would have made for the best wives and so therefore been the best helper suitables to the best men that would have been the best leaders for the country when they can't even get married when they're still single at freaking 39 with a geriatric womb unable to do anything and all that's getting married of the jezebels the women that are out just stealing husbands from men from from other women sorry the women that are putting spiking men's drinks to make sure that they marry them Women who are frustrated that boyfriends have not proposed marriage to them in way too long. We've been dating for seven years and then nudging the boyfriends along with Gorobella. They're the ones that are getting married. Women that are dishonest, full of gossip, standing in the middle of marriages of their friends. Women that are bewitching colleagues all over these streets are the ones walking down the aisle. They're the ones that are marrying men, making out of these men rottenness in their bones. Whitewashed tombs of unions, Bonnie and Clyde in relationships. While the best men and the best women are living in the dregs of society, men of which are struggling even to get married because you've impoverished them. So they can't raise imali a lobola. They can't raise lobola money. Dowry, bridal price. They cannot afford to basically take care of a woman because you've taken a perfectly wholesome, godly man and made him poor, making it hard for him to leave his mother and father's house and cleave to a woman and the two of them become one flesh. You have taken godly men and ransacked them godly women and ensured that they get a geriatric womb highly unlikely able to conceive because now they're turning 40 without husbands while all of y'all's jezebels are married and ahab namby pamby men being pulled by the nose by silly women running the country into the ground like i said it's a state capture you're like the taliban in afghanistan after joe biden pulled out america you are irresponsible to run the show you impoverish a country you threaten people into submission you take girls out of school you ensure that there is chaos and you intensify Christian persecution in the country. That's exactly what is going on over here. It's a state capture. However, it is spiritual. And so because it is spiritual, it is unseen and it's also not being covered by news networks across the world. So for those reasons, the only way out, I guess, for those who can see it for what it is, this genocide, they gotta leave. They have got to leave. All I can do is go. All I can do is go. You've given a woman a terminal illness, even though she's perfectly healthy. You've put me in a hospice. And I keep saying this, like I've been saying it for years, that I am terminally ill, even though I'm perfectly healthy. And the thing that's made me terminal is this dastardly country. I need to get out of South Africa. And whether or not people want to block me is irrelevant because herein lies the deal. God knows how much I'm languishing. God knows how much I fear just aging, just going from one day to the next, to the next, to the next, while striving to get myself out of this. I am very concerned about my YouTube channel and how it is that I'm not getting any watch hours. I'm strategizing around that like no man's business, trying to see if I can't increase them so I can monetize, so I can be visible, more visible to the world, so I can get out of here. So I, I need to leave this country. It does not deserve me. And just the fact that my own family, I dreamt about them, essentially accepting that I went to school for nothing. I crunched numbers for nothing. I studied thick textbooks for nothing. I met people for nothing. I got trained in languages and can speak them for nothing. I interviewed at companies successfully and worked for nothing. That I have work experience, that I've got a CV that has got some girth in it for nothing. Like just the fact that my own family, guys, I'm sorry, like, you know what? Maybe if my family were concerned about me, I might feel like I need to stay. Because, you know, I'd forget these South Africans, they're ridiculous, but at least I got my uncle, at least I got my cousin, at least I got my aunt, at least I got my mom, at least I got my sister. But when my own family doesn't care that I went to primary school once upon a time, when my own family could not give a rat's behind that I <laughs> was always on the honors roll in high school, when, when they don't care that I studied for years and that I did really well at some point in my career, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, you know what, like blood is thicker than water and when it's super super thin, when it's super super thin mixed with all different kinds of nasty uh, anticoagulants, I'm sorry, like I, I, I can't, like I have, there is nothing left for me in South Africa, nothing. There is absolutely nothing left for me in South Africa and even my desires, the things that I want that I've always wanted since I was basically just like a baby, a child, yeah. I cannot acquire them with any level of reasonableness in this country and look believable. I cannot acquire a husband in this country and be believable. I cannot acquire children and be believable. I can't get married and be believable. I can't run a business and be believable. You know why? Because I have no one. I have nothing. Every South African that I have spoken to on the internet has turned awry on me in one way, shape or form. It's like they can't help but manifest demons. Not every, there's one so far that has not gone awry on me. I need you to understand that there is nothing left for me here. On top of that, <laughs> we get that it's the last days and things are super lonely. But I was never that lonely girl. And that loneliness is a travesty and an abomination to a point where I must what, rent a crowd at my wedding? Must I rent a bridesmaid? <laughs> must I rent a family? Mama, must, uh, must I have a wedding where only the groom has a whole bunch of people? But at my wedding, it's just my mom and my, and my, and my two sisters. That, that, really? When I had like a whole crowd, it would be a sham and an embarrassment. And it would also not represent appropriately the true glory of what God has done for a woman over here. I, I, for the life of me, I'm not about to marry a man with no friends at my wedding, with me having his younger sister for a bridesmaid, for my maiden of honor. Basically, his whole family is my side too. No. The only way that that kind of salute, that that, that kind of situation can ever work out is if you're marrying a man from another country in another country such that everyone from your country that you've ever known can't possibly make the wedding because it's expensive can't be flying over to some other nation just to attend Garabo's wedding so just like with most international weddings where the bride or the groom is getting married away from their country the one person that's getting married away from their country will have a scant number of people attending that wedding for understandable reasons it will make them look like they ain't got nobody. It'll just make them the foreigner marrying our local girl or the foreigner marrying our local guy. That is the only time that me having no family and no friends at a wedding will still be glorious. It's if I'm from South Africa, but I'm getting married somewhere else. My husband's family will be there. I might fly my mom, my sisters over. And so only have like four or five family members of mine there. And the whole venue be populated teeming at the folds with his people. It'll be understandable on that day. People won't ask too many questions. Why does this girl not have any friends? She's from South Africa. Like everybody's back home. That's the only time it makes sense. I've thought about it over and over and over and over again. If God is going to give me a husband. If God is going to give me children. And if my wedding is going to be glorious. It has got to be away from South Africa. It's got to be off-site. It's got to be in some, on some, in some other country. The man has to belong to another nation. And I have to have lived there for a decent enough amount of time to have gained a maiden of honor or something out of someone I met there. Maybe, you know, fellowship within the church space that I work in. Perhaps through my YouTube channel, interactions with other Christians. And so basically create a friend, get a new friend make a new friend and in time for me to have maybe two or three bridesmaids that are actually my friends it makes sense when you are from another country and all you have at your wedding are friends that are from that region friends who live in that country they're the only ones at your wedding people don't generally have twenty thousand friends but they do have twenty thousand family members so when they're not at your wedding it is perfectly explainable when you're in another country there are no family members that i would ever want at my wedding do you understand what i'm saying other than my mom and my two sisters, not because they haven't betrayed me, but because they're the only ones I'm prepared to take in my stride. Everybody else, I'm sorry. I, I will have nothing to do with them. And they also, ironically, also will have nothing to do with me. My uncle is the one that is in a position to receive the lobola. Let that be done remotely. Yeah, proper. On FaceTime or something. Let that be done on Zoom. Let the discussions and negotiations be done over the internet. And then the transfer will be done by EFT from another country. But that man, my man, my husband is not going to be standing in front of an uncle that try to sabotage my future and my prospects. No, the only honor that that man is going to get is that Lobola is going to be negotiated through him. It's going to come through because it's what needs to happen. That's what's the right thing to do to happen. But as for him being given the honor 
of actually having somebody fly over to South Africa to do this whole thing. No, it's not necessary. I'll be the one to pack myself, maybe my cat, and go. And then my mom will attend an international wedding and then come back to South Africa. I That's the only thing that makes sense. It's the only scenario that makes sense. I have done, I've literally thought about it over and over again on some God. If you're going to give me a glorious wedding, how's that even going to be a thing when I have no friends? Must I rent a crowd like those lonely people? Must I rent a crowd? Is, is it, Are things really that bad? And as I've been thinking about it, it's literally, like I said, it's the only thing that makes sense. I have to leave South Africa if I'm going to get answered prayer in the way that I want it. Otherwise, everything will be a compromise. It'll be a shoddy rando. There is actually a, a woman that uh, moved over. She had a Benjamin and Akiri. Thank you. Benjamin and Akiri, that couple on YouTube. A black woman from Kenya. The man is from the US. Uh, she flew over to the US to get married over there. And there was barely anybody from her side of the family for right really for good reason. Like it was explainable because they couldn't afford to fly them over. All of them. There was like one or maybe one or two people from her family. But the rest of that wedding was populated by Benjamin's people. It was full of a whole bunch of white people and one or two like three black people there. Because Akiri's people were not there. For good reason. Not because she was at odds with them. Not because she didn't have friends. Not because they, they didn't love her. But because they're in Kenya. Yeah. So let me be like Akiri. Is that basic? marry in another country entirely and it'd be perfectly understandable why only the groom has a whole bunch of people there i am not staying in this state captured country where ancestor uh, ancestral worshippers are running the show at the demise at the expense of everyone in their lives you are destroying south africa destroy it at your leisure if you want we have tried i have stood in the gap i have attempted but just the fact that my own family members can concoct sorcery to block me from getting where I need to get and acknowledging perfectly in my dream that they don't care that I'm intelligent. That I, I, I was basically supposed to be a star. I was supposed to be really successful, but I'm no way. Allowing that to be a thing that you're chilling in, I apologize. The dream I had, my uncle was out here disregarding every intelligent thing that could come out of my mouth because it didn't matter. And then my cousin, some other, like some dude, right? Who is uncle H, like one of those older cousins, the two of them were conspiring to basically conceal or hide the fact that I am a travesty. That's witchcraft right there with two people collaborating against my mother's family yet again. And I'm like, you know what? You don't deserve my lobola, but you're going to get it anyway because you're the only uncle that we negotiate through. Is that basic? Okay. But you're not going to get it with somebody actually shaking your actual hand. You will do a Zoom call. You will do a Facebook chat. You will do a FaceTime chat. You will literally be given lobola through EFT and your small little grainy video be how it is that you talk to people you're not going to be given the glory of my day you're just not I am exhausted with all of the sorcery in this country I am tired I am betrayed and I will not do it anymore and I'm seeking the Lord's face ever so effervescently to get me out of here by any means necessary I need to leave South Africa I'm sorry this is the end of the road for you you and I are done we are finished. Do you understand? I am not staying here and I do not care if South Africans feel so raw and so uncomfortable and so unhappy with my decision or feel abandoned like I'm some weird little strange odd defector to a point where they want to unsubscribe. I do not care. Like guys, I so don't care that I'm actively uploading my videos at certain hours in order to avoid the South African audience. I want to reduce them to like 5% of my audience. I don't care because I am changing my life. Due to the fact that the fact that South Africans made out of me a hospice patient when I was perfectly healthy. You made me a patient in a hospice. You gave me a terminal illness when I was perfectly healthy. We are not coming back from that. There is no coming back from that. Two days ago, I then got another dream where two of my friends from high school and I keep on seeing them collaborating just like my uncle and my cousin. They were forcing their agenda down my throat screaming at me yelling at me trying to make me embrace them because apparently i don't have friends i don't have any friends and so therefore i must just take them back and I, all i can ask myself is why are you guys always literally together in my dreams do you also perform sorcery together did you i mean in order for you to perform sorcery together you would have to have admitted that you did do this to me and then worked in concert to prevent me from ever coming up for air so you will not be exposed it's all i can think two of my girls two, two of my former friends from high school are literally conspiring with each other to handle me and they are always so coercive and so bossy i want nothing to do with them but they feel as if though since i have no friends and i have no one i must just take them back because i'm very embarrassing right now with me having written everybody off 
go on with your state capture. You don't want repentance. You don't want to turn aside from your darkness. You have made people live in hospices. You have put mechanical engineers in concierge jobs at clubhouses in complexes in this country. You've taken teachers and accountants and made them car guards and waiters and waitresses at restaurants. You've made them casuals at retail stores, folding clothes and telling customers, can I help you? Asking customers, ma'am, can I help you? Scanning groceries at the pick and pay. Despite having a whole big fat chunky qualifications for a qualification from a university, you have put call center agents in companies that have got BCom degrees. Like, I'm sorry. Like, take your stupid country. Take it. Take it with its astronomical unemployment rate and the only people being able to speak being witches. Like, take it. Take your silly country that has got qualified accountants in call centers. Take it. Because I will have nothing to do with it. You have destroyed your own economy. You have ruined South Africa. You have pulled the rug from the feet of your own nation. And then you expect that you're going to be safe tomorrow. Stick around with your car guards that can crunch numbers better than you. Hanged in with your teachers that are not able to make more than 3,000 rands a month. Like proper. Take it. Take your teachers that are out here ironing your clothes as your domestic workers because it's the only job they could find. Take it. Continue to have super eloquent people doing your gardens, pulling out weeds from your gardens while you pay them 150 rands for a full day's work, even though they can speak better English than you. They can articulate themselves better than you. They likely can slay in a PowerPoint presentation better than you, but ain't nobody giving them an opportunity. Keep that as a status quo. Go on right ahead and grab people who have got technical degrees in metallurgy and put them at Builder's Warehouse with a board saying Tyler. Put them at Builder's Warehouse with a board saying painter. Continue to do that. Take your country. Take your country and make criminals out of kids that would have been super duper stars in the country purely because you blocked their opportunities because it's your cousin. Continue to do that. You're making criminals out of people and you are also making low income people, uh, low income South Africans living in the dregs of society out of people. When you're the ones collecting these big fat checks, albeit not even being the best person for the job, take your country as for me i'm leaving like literally far be it from me for the day to ever arrive when i will ever scan a grocery at pick and pay when i will ever wait tables at a wimpy when i will ever clean anybody's house when i am this educated when i am this eloquent this intelligent this gifted because my country have made a decision that that's all i'm gonna get to do having put me in a hospice albeit being perfectly healthy i apologize i am not terminally ill my country is so I'm the one that needs to go out. You're in a hospice. All I do in a hospice is visit the patient, say my goodbyes, leave, and I guess mourn later once they've passed away. I will mourn you, South Africa, from a distance, far, far away, where I'm living with my husband and my first child on the way. I will mourn you from a distance. I will admit I will mourn you because I used to love you, but I will certainly not stick around in the hospice as a thriving, living human being. You're the ones in a casket, not me. I'm out of here, whether or not you like it. I am exasperated by the level of evil of this country. I can not do it understand this is a prophecy and it is going to come to pass whether or not you like it i'm leaving south africa and when i do you will reel you will mourn and you will discover what you have done to some of the best people in your country i was not born and bred and raised to scan groceries neither was i born bred and raised to be disregarded by an entire country i am smart and i'm set apart by god i'm chosen i'm gifted I was not supposed to live in the corners of society shrouded by a veil of secrecy by clandestine witches that like to poop where they eat. I was never supposed to be that thing. And for you in your narcissism to imagine that you can successfully bury someone that God has chosen, you're naive. You're naive. Goodbye, Sodom. Let the Lord burn you now. I'm done with you, South Africa. I am exhausted with your nonsense and it's so sad that so many men of God and so many women of God keep on coming to this country to preach to it they have no clue that as soon as they listen to sermons of men that travel all the way from overseas just to speak to us they then go home and bewitch their own sisters they have no idea just how bad the epidemic of witchcraft is and it's also unfortunate that in the west they have no respect for how bad witchcraft is in Africa otherwise they would focus a lot more on it in trying to teach Africans or oh, how in the world to deal with such a situation as that and then what's 
especially unfortunate is that a lot of African Christians keep on manufacturing doctrines of demons to deal with the sorcery in these streets talking about bringing down altars and all that jazz like all these extra biblical teachings just to deal with a people that are psychotic and it's like it does not really help to teach false doctrine it does not nothing we have to stick to true biblical Christianity bottom line is this when in a country people are walking in a group thing when on a continent people are walking in a frenzy a daze there is not very many miracles that you can perform no matter how many times you pray in tongues and jant and grunt and act like the prophets of Baal. Bottom line is, in an unbelieving nation, there is not much power from God that is going to be displayed because God responds to faith. It is impossible to please him without it. So in a nation without faith, the Lord is not going to insist on performing a miracle. So to manufacture false doctrine in order to deal with the wickedness in Africa is just not going to do anything for you. Y'all need to be left as that basic. Y'all need to be abandoned like an orphan. Y'all need to just be left. Maybe then on that day you might get up, wear some pants since you're naked and do a better thing. But as, as for me, I'm sorry. Like literally my bags are packed. I am done. Let American preachers come here and talk to you because you have more respect for them. And let uh, you, you, what is this, um, uh, preachers from Australia. Let, let um, English preachers rock up from the UK. Let people from other countries talk to you because you will not listen to your own prophets your own prophetesses you won't listen to your own priests your own evangelists you just keep bewitching them into oblivion since a prophet has no honor in his own hometown let the american church continue to come here to evangelize you into oblivion seeing as you don't even respond to them let them help you because we are underappreciated and it is a thankless job that we do in this country even though we have the context of this land we prophesy over this land as we understand it given that it's like the palm of our hands the way that we know it but you won't hear us let us then go somewhere else bye south africa like proper i'm done i'm signing out in christ name crank peace